Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today I want to talk about how to find the domain for this function. So how do we find the domain for this function? It has the square root in the numerator and then there is a linear expression in the denominator and then you may say isn't that easy because we cannot divide by zero so x cannot be 4 but it's actually not that simple because there is a square root in the numerator and that can actually affect how we are writing down the domain right because there are also restrictions on the on what x can be because of the square root. So let's get started. So first, we can actually rewrite this function as uh, the product of square root of x and then times 1 over x minus 4. And then we can consider each one separately. Okay, so for the first function, so for the square root of x, okay, what happened is that we are going to require the stuff inside the square root to be non-negative. So what does that mean? Non-negative means that it can be either positive or zero. So we can set up an inequality, which is just x greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so that's the, uh, if we are finding the domain for the square root of x, then we have this. And then now for the other one, for the other one, for the, um, for the rational function, so, we have a linear expression in the denominator. And then what happened is that basically we can just see it easily that x should not be 4, otherwise we'll be dividing by 0. So here we actually will have x is what is not equal to 4. Is that okay? Now what we do is that if we want to find the domain for this function, we actually put those two together and then we can actually have the domain for the whole function. So how do we actually do that? This is what we can do. So what we are going to do is that we are um, we can actually just set up a lumbar line. Actually, instead of putting it here, then I should put it at a lower spot. I think that will be easier. So now we just set up the lumbar line first. And then so this is our x axis. OK, and then we can see that there was a zero here. So we can put the zero on the lumbar line. So there was a zero here and then there was a four here. So we can actually just put the four here. OK, now. For uh, for the first part of the function, the square root of x, x must be greater than or equal to zero. So what we can do is that we can um, we can do the shading on the lumbar line, but we actually need to do it above the lumbar line so that we can look at where um, they overlap, where the shadings overlap for the two parts of the function. Okay, so for this one, x is greater than or equal to zero. So that means we have a solid dot because of the equal sign. And then greater than zero means that we are taking all the values that are on the right side of the zero because it's greater. So we have with this. Now, what about this one? This one means that we can take all the x values except four. Okay, so that means we are going to put an open circle at the four. And then we are going to take all the other values. So that means we can shade anything that's greater than four. So that means on the right side of the four. And then we can also take anything that is less than four. So we are going to, we are going to take everything that's on the left side of the four. So, so that's what the graph looks like. And then now, in order for this function to be defined at the um, at those x values, we actually want to get the overlapping region here. Okay, so we can see which part that they overlap. And so what happened is that we can see that this part right here, starting from zero, they actually overlap, right? So we can actually see that this region right here, they actually overlap. And then when we get to this four here, now they don't really overlap. It's really because uh, we cannot allow x to be four for this one over x minus four. But even though we do allow four for uh, the square root of x, okay? So that means we cannot take this. We cannot take this one. And then what about uh, anything that's greater than four? That's fine. So we can actually take all that stuff. Okay, so that means what? If we are um, shading the overlapping region on the lumbar line, then we actually can have all this shaded. And then remember that we uh, we cannot take the four, so that means we are going to get an open circle right here. So that's an open circle. And then what about this part right here? This part 
uh, we also want to include that. Actually, I assume we're using dash line, but then I suggest use a solid line, right? So we can have a solid dot right here because the uh, square root of x is defined at zero and then one over x minus four is also defined as zero. So we can include the zero. So now based on the shading, we can actually write down the domain. So the domain would be, so the domain for this function would be what? Starting at zero, right? And then we have zero and then including zero because we get a solid dot here. So we are going to use the bracket. So starting from zero and then we go all the way to what four. So we're going to put down the four here. And then because four should not be included, right? So we're going to use parentheses. So remember that if you want to include an endpoint, then you got to use bracket. But if you don't want to include an endpoint, then we are going to use parentheses. And then so now there is another interval right here. So we can put a union here. So this symbol looks like a U. And then we start from four. So remember that because we're not including the four. So we are going to use parentheses right here. And then we go all the way to, well, there is no stopping. So that means we go all the way to positive infinity. And then you may say, so we use parentheses here, brackets. Infinity is not a number. So we will be using parentheses here. And then in fact, you can just remember that for infinity or negative infinity, you will always be using parentheses because it's not a number that you can include. That okay? So that's it for this problem. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. I will see you next time.